We're celebrating a charitable Christmas in the Carolinas. Stay tuned. Carolina People is coming up next. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Villa Romana Italian Restaurant in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on charitable activities in the Carolinas. And we're visiting with Ronaldo Montrose, the restaurant's executive chef and owner. Ronaldo, thanks good so morning, much for being sir. with us this morning. Yes, good morning. Nice in to be here. Incredible opportunity to highlight so many of the charities and the, and the men and women that make those charities tick in the Carolinas. And to be here at Villa Romana Italian Restaurant in front of this nativity scene, the highlight for us and I think for the viewers, the opportunity to share Christmas together, but surely to be in front of a nativity scene and to be with the creator of the nativity scene, obviously not the entire idea of nativity, but the scene itself, this is amazing. Yes, yes, this goes back a long way. I wanted to do this for quite a few years. And a couple of years ago, I decided to uh, put my uh, dream actually to uh, to show what nativity or what Christmas is all about. Yeah. That's what I come out with the nativity scene. Well, this is exciting. I sure want to talk about the nativity scene, but I really want to talk about you first real quick. Uh, are you originally from the area? No, I was actually born and raised in Rome. I uh, basically done all my schools, uh, went to the high school in Rome, and then uh, back in uh, 1972 I decided, uh, or not decided, but uh, my family or most of my family decided to move in the United States. Uh, we four settled in West Virginia, and then from there we used to come down here on vacation, and uh, we like the area, the climb, and uh, it's very similar to the uh, Mediterranean climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided to move down here and uh, open up uh, Villa Romana. And when, had you ever thought about, uh, when you came to the States, about doing anything other than opening an Italian restaurant? Um, when I first came to the United States, no, I don't think my... Uh, when I first got here, the restaurant was not my, uh, my dream, I would say. But as soon as I got here, I believe I started working into the restaurants, and I had some uh, cooking background before I come to the state, and, uh, and kind of set my mood or my, my future uh, goals and uh, dreams for a restaurant. Yes, very definitely. Do you have other family members involved in the restaurant, Ronaldo? Um, I used to. I used to have uh, my sister and uh, my brother and uh, my other sister all involved in the restaurant. The only one is left is actually my older sister. She's still involved some in uh, in the restaurant of her own, and, uh, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And in Villa Romana, Italian restaurant itself, you have some family involved. Uh, yes, my brother, uh, he helps me during the day, and of course my mother is here every day, even though she doesn't do any cooking. Uh, but she's here greeting my customers and um, wishing them well every day. Yes. This, is, uh, this is basically her life. She, she looks forward to coming in every day and greeting customers mm -hmm. and uh, visiting with everybody. She loves to do that, even though sometimes her help does not permit her to do so. And you've also got some other family members, I think, involved, uh, uh, either blood or through marriage, involved in the restaurant? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, my wife uh, is my right-hand person. She's here with me every day. Uh, she used to work with me in the kitchen for uh, basically for the past 17 years. Mm -hmm. And back in June, I decided for, uh, not decided, but we both uh, de decided uh, it was time for her to move into the dining room and be the, uh, actually the present hostess and to meet all the customers like I have done for 20 years and like my mother has done yeah. for the past 18 years. It's amazing. And what's that like, Renal? I mean, we, we talk about family businesses. We talk about the activity of being in it with a spouse or being in it with other family, but to have your wife and your mother in the restaurant at the same time, and of course for your wife it's your her mother-in-law, and so I'm sure there's, uh, there's probably, probably never any discord, but what's that like on a, on a daily basis? Well, I think I'm very fortunate to the fact that my wife is very understanding and therefore she's very easy going. She has an easy going personality which she gets along with my mother and with the rest of my family uh, with no problem. And working together, uh, I think we have developed throughout the years just a relationship. Then we when we are working is basically strictly business. 
Mm-hmm. And of course, we do a lot of things on the side uh, of work and so on, and we try to enjoy the time, the, the, the little time that we don't really talk about the restaurant or being a restaurant, and we try to enjoy the time as much as we can. Mm-hmm. How about real quick about Villa Romano? How would you characterize the food and atmosphere here at the restaurant? Obviously, we're sitting in front of the nativity scene now. This isn't up year-round, or is the Christmas tree that's behind you. But what about uh, when, you, when you think about the food and explain it, if you had a couple seconds to explain it to a viewer or anyone else? Um, well, the food is, uh, uh, we'll call, I would call my food most, uh, most authentic uh, food you can get. It. I pretty much got the standard, to the standard recipe that they were, I bring it back, uh, just about every year from Italy, and I, in those recipe, I, have, you know, I develop maybe different recipe or new recipe. But I can go back uh, when I was maybe 12 or 13 years old, and I used to bake bread in a large bakery that my godfather used to own. So uh, I've, I've been in, the, in around food pretty much all my life, and whatever I do here is as, as authentic as I can get it. Mm-hmm. And we do make our own bread on premises. We do make our own pasta on premises. Uh, we cut all our veal. We make breadcrumbs. I even grow some spices. So uh, pretty much everything we do is hand done and, uh, and it's done by the order. We don't pre-cook almost anything in the restaurant. Everything is done by, by the order. That's wonderful. That's wonderful, and you really have the, a Roman sense when you come in, when a, when a patron comes in to see, of course, the statue in the middle, to feel the art, uh, feeding them essentially on the walls. Talk real quick about Rome. I know, obviously, a, a big focus today is in the nativity scene, but it's so exciting to have the opportunity to be with somebody who grew up in Rome. When you think about one of the central cities of the world, particularly at Christmas time, what was it like growing up in Rome? Do you have memories of Christmas time in Rome? Oh, definitely. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the best part of, uh, of growing up in Rome is you have a lot of the churches that build nativity scene. Of course, they're a little larger than this one. And, uh, and you can go into St. Peter Basilic and uh, the figurines in St. Peter Basilic is actually uh, the, the building right on the outside or right in the middle of the square. And uh, the figurines are actually larger than me, so they're much larger. Uh, nativity scene than what I have built. Uh, that was one of the highlights. And the other highlights also you can go, uh, uh, you can walk through the downtown area. And a lot of times you hear what we call them Zampugnari, which they, uh, there are people that come down from small villages and they play Christmas pu- music with their bagpipes. Wow. Uh, so it, uh, it basically puts you in uh, even better Christmas music. And then, of course, you have all those. Christmas lights throughout the streets and so on. Mm-hmm. Do you have any memories of Christmas time in Rome, Ronaldo? Uh, many, many. Of course, I was raised and I was growing up in uh, in Rome. So, uh, uh, probably one of the best memory of all is not only building an activity scene. And back then, you know, you came build it with uh, ceramic figurines. So we used to paint our own figurines and, and cut them out with scissors and make them stand up in a smaller version of an activity scene. But Probably one of the best highlights uh, was when we were little, uh, we, were on, we were back in elementary school and we used to write, or uh, we used to write notes, Christmas notes, or uh, a Christmas letter actually. And we'd do that in class while we were in fourth, second, and third grade. And of course, you know, our handwriting was, you know, not as fancy as it is now. And uh, we used to tell our mom and dad, you know, happy, or Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and we love you, and all that stuff. And on Christmas Day, my mother used to do the dining room setting, she would put all the plates down, and we should put this little letter or envelope with the, the notes we write underneath each plate. So oh, therefore, wow. uh, whenever they raise the plate up, and then my mom and dad would see those notes, and they would, that's what would make our Christmas. That's amazing. That's amazing. Obviously, there's so many questions I'd love to ask about growing up in Rome and surely Christmas time in Rome, as well as any trips back to Rome. But I sure want to spend a few minutes talking about the nativity scene. Can you give the viewers a little idea about what went into creating this uh, nativity scene? Sure. Um, well, like I said, it was a, a dream that uh, has been with me for quite a few years. And about two years ago, I decided to go ahead and build it. And it's pretty much handmade. And, uh, and once... When, every time I go back to Italy, I always pick up little extra uh, ceramic figurines to put in there. 
but this one took about three weeks to, or the four sand to go, they take about three weeks and uh, I found some of the materials like the, the sky materials and the background materials I found about at Walmart about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm a late person, so I stay up late, and uh, this, I was working on this late at night to build that up. And uh, it's pretty much all handmade. Uh, the, I put some lights behind the uh, uh, behind the fabric to give the Christmas or give the sky lights actually. Mm -hmm. uh, the manger is hand built, and uh, and uh, I have uh, everything else is pretty much handmade. It's all, uh, virtually everything's handmade. It's amazing the commitment with the with the stars and and the, and the background there. To think about all this time, I don't see baby Jesus in here, Ronaldo. Well, that one, uh, is, you know, according to the tradition, baby Jesus is not born until the twenty fifth or Christmas Day or Christmas night, actually. And normally, the way uh, I was raised, you don't put baby Jesus into the crib or uh, in, uh, in the manger until after midnight. Uh, uh, Midnight Mass. Mm -hmm. So after Midnight Mass, I normally come over here, open up the restaurant, put baby Jesus in the crib, and uh, and then we'll stay there until until I actually dismantle uh, the nativity scene until next year. Mm -hmm. Do any of the figurines move, or do they stay fixed during the season? Um, the three kings actually um, they move forward on a daily basis. I move forward maybe a half inch or one inch closer to the manger. According to the tradition, they will not get. To, uh, to the manger until the Epiphany, which is a January 6th, and that's when the exchanges of gift is done. So therefore, I move them forward a little bit at a time to represent their, uh, their time and, and their miles or uh, the distance they put behind them. That's amazing. Have any diners commented to you anything about the nativity scene? Have you gotten any feedback as to... Oh yes, most of my customers love it. They they feel like uh, this is one of the uh, one of the few things that still put them in the Christmas spirit. Uh, you know, of course, you get the Christmas tree and uh, and you get all the Christmas lights and so on. But in the TV scene, really puts them into the Christmas spirit. Definitely, definitely. Ronaldo, lastly, when's the restaurant open? And can viewers or could anyone pop by to see the nativity scene, or would they need to come by and and eat really to check it out? Do they pop by during the day or are you, uh, uh your hours? Yes, uh, where the restaurant is open from 5 to 10. So, uh, of course, during dinner hours, they can come in any time. They can just come in and just visit. Uh, I would love uh, to show the, the, the work I put into it. And I think it's a beautiful set. And I don't mind showing that to anybody. And if they want to come in during the day, uh, they can either call the restaurant. There's always somebody there after 12 o'clock. So they can either call the restaurant. Of they, they they're just driving by. If we want to stop in, they can just come into the uh, side door on the building on the kitchen side, and they just pop in and, and come in and visit. It's wonderful. You heard Ronaldo Montrose say it. Whether you're dining here or not, Monday through fr Monday through Sunday, pop by, check out the nativity scene, get an extra feel of Christmas at a very special time. Ronaldo, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank thanks so much for hosting us. Thank you very much. Stay tuned to more Carolina people coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina people. This morning we're at Villa Romana Italian restaurant in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on area charities and we're visiting with Jim McManus the Director of Christian Missions. Jim, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Greg, it's certainly our pleasure to be with you today to talk about our Mission Outreach Program and to compliment you on the outstanding job you're doing on the program. Oh, Jim, incredible opportunity to be here, not only with you to focus on Christian Missions, but the opportunity to sit in this seat asking you questions, asking a man who's been asking questions for years on end. It's a remarkable opportunity. Still learning, Greg, Still <laughs> after learning. all these years. But you know, Greg, I want to compliment you on what you're doing here with this public affairs news program. You know, one of the one of the first things the commission regulates the station to do, and that is to serve the community with news, public affairs, and doing exactly what you are doing. And a lot of stations put this in the background, but you put it out front and you said, "Hey, we want to talk about the problems, the needs, the interests that the leaders of this community have in in." 
the surrounding area. And so I, I say, man, keep up the good work. Thank you, Jim. We're definitely doing that. I wish we could have launched it years ago. I wish we could have launched it when you were involved in Channel 43 back in 96 and all the years before that, but just as well. Let's, let's talk about yourself. Are you originally from the area? Greg, we've, we've been here for about 20 years now. It's sort of our, our home, you know. Mm -hmm. Thomas Wolfe said in his uh, novel, uh, Look Homeward Angel, he says, you can't go home. So this is home to us. We love it here in the Myrtle Beach area, the Grand Sand area. One of the finest places on the earth to live. The people are just totally outstanding. People come from all over the world to be in Myrtle Beach. Exactly and right. so we love it here, and we're going to stay here. Well, you also have some great roots in uh, the Tar Heel State, living much of your life in, uh, in North Carolina, and obviously with a heck of a lot of our viewers in Robinson and Scotland and Columbus County. You've spent time, I'm sure, going through those communities, if not having lived there. Where, where are some of the other locations in North Carolina you've lived? Yeah, Greg, we, uh, we were in eastern North Carolina for a number of years with our mission outreach program, actually, where we had our offices for a number of years in eastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. We had several Christian radio stations that we had in our uh, outreach program in the eastern North Carolina area, up in the Burlington area, and in the Greenville, uh, North Carolina area. And then we had outreach programs in our mission that spread out into the Carolinas, various other areas of the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. And then we were in Greenville, South Carolina for a number of years. And so from there, we sort of came down this area because we saw a great need in missions work here in the coastal area. Definitely, definitely. Let's talk about Christian missions. When did you first become involved with Christian missions? Greg, Jan, and I, my wife and I, we had been involved in mission work for many, many years. Then, uh, as, as you remember, we, my background is media, radio and television. So while we were doing this, we got involved in missions work. This was many years ago. And then it's going on 21 years ago that we founded Christian Mission Outreach, a long time. So you and Jan founded Christian Mission Outreach. We sure Outreach. did. And she's a big part of our work, even though I... She still does her banking work, but by the same token, at night, she packages things and gets things ready, you know, for our mission outreach program. It's amazing, almost 21 years to think of that, and now that we're two days before Christmas, wow. think about such a, a season of so much focus happens. When we think of an overarching objective of Christian mission outreach, if you had to sum it up, if you only had 15, 20, 30 seconds to, to lay out the, the primary objective, what would you, how could you lay that out to the viewers, Jim? Greg, our objective is very simple. It is to serve the people and the needs that they might have. You know, Jesus taught his disciples, and me being a Christian and a minister for many, many years, uh, we, we saw where Christ said these things to his disciples. He said, if you feed the hungry, clothe the naked or the needy, he said, minister to the least of these, visit those that are in prison, take care of the widows and the, and the orphans. He said, if you do these things, you've done them as unto me. And so we felt that calling. Now, for many, many years, we were on television, we ministered on TV, uh, on radio, evangelistic, as well as pastoring, but we felt that these things were the things that Christ spoke to us. He said, do these things to the least of these. And so that's what our calling is, and we still do this. Truly, truly. I know at uh, around Thanksgiving time, so often you all are out delivering incredible numbers of baskets throughout the community. I'm sure Christmas time, but just last week, I think you all... We want to hear about the distribution and, and how Christmas presents were delivered. Real quick, your main facility, is that located in Myrtle Beach? Yes, it is, Greg. Our officers are now at 4563 Highway 17 Bypass here in Myrtle Beach. We do have distribution centers in uh, four or five other states. Our main concentration, of course, is this area now. Yes. And our funding uh, uh, that comes from this area goes into this area. The others are self-supporting in the other states. Yeah, yeah. How about some of the volunteers working with you? I'm sure you must have, uh, I guess, virtually everyone involved are volunteers. We have several people that, that do receive some compensation. But I said that most of our employees, our workers, are volunteers. We have maybe eight or ten regulars, and we might have several hundred that work with us on our various programs. So we have a lot of people, and the, the various jobs that they do, uh, some bring in food, some take out food, you know, distribute food. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people, Greg, in the community that don't have uh, an automobile. They, they can come and pick up food. Many are elderly, and so we take the food to them. Mm -hmm. And many do come in, but there are so, so many that don't have that capability of going 
uh, to our facility. Can, can you tell us a little bit, I, I know you talked about taking the food to them and being able to get out to them. Is that the, the primary way you assist those who come to you for help? Obviously, uh, uh, being an outreach program, there's surely the ministering aspect, but let's say, just give an example of someone coming in or, or if they call you. Ha, ha, what, what's your first response? First thing, you know, when they call our office, uh, Greg, is uh, we invite them to come in if they have the capability. Come into the office, and we have an application form, a process that we go through. And uh, if somebody comes in and says, hey, we need food, regardless of who they are or where they come from, we get food for them. Mm -hmm. We don't have any qualification. We get food even though they fill out an application. And then we have clothing available also. We have uh, many other areas of help. Now, we are one of the few agencies or organizations that take time to do counseling. If somebody comes in, like, for example, a young man came in a couple of weeks ago. They called me up front. He said, I need everything. <laughs> he needed food. We got him food. He needed clothing. We got him clothing. And he said, I've got so many problems and financial needs in my life. I don't know which way to turn. So I took time to sit down with him and talk with him about, hey, this is the direction to go. Here are some things we recommend. And uh, I asked him if they, if they want us to pray with them. Some do, some don't. Mm -hmm. I believe prayer, in my opinion, is a, is a strong answer to many of the problems of today. Absolutely. And as we get two, two days uh, leading into Christmas, as we think 48, from, uh, 48 hours from now, oftentimes so much as we sit in front of this nativity scene, and I know uh, yeah, I having know. Ronaldo on right before you to talk about the nativity scene and thinking about the excitement of his explanation that baby Jesus is not yet in the nativity scene really? because mm -hmm. he hadn't yet ar arrived. The experience that, uh, that his family has shared with us, I think, recognizes what your family shares now with so many in our community. Can we talk real quick about how folks find out about Christian Mission Outreach? Well, you know, Greg, we've been here a long time. Mm -hmm. On our application process, we have uh, the Christian Mission Outreach at Dixie Stampede. Has that been going, that's maintained, or obviously for many, many years, it was the opportunity to bring folks in from all over the, the region, throughout Robinson yeah, County, oh yeah. County. I know a heck of a lot of folks came down from that area. What exactly was that? I'm not sure if it's still going on, Jim, but... Yeah, now, this was a wonderful program that we carried on maybe for about six or seven years. We're not doing this now, mm -hmm. but we brought in young people, you know, from disadvantaged areas throughout the Carolinas, mm -hmm. many of them in the areas you were speaking of, and brought them to a program. We gave out toys. They had the uh, wonderful show there at Dixie Stampede. You know, Dolly Parton was, she was the, actually the one that uh, ordained this back in the beginning. When Dolly came here in the beginning, she knew of our work. She's extremely mission-oriented and to help people. Has many programs going on. But, you know, over management changes, we've changed the other venues. And we have uh, folks like Carolina, uh, the uh, Carolina Opry, legends and concert various programs that we take young people and some of our mission workers uh, uh, to see you know and mm -hmm. it's a real blessing at christmas time very definitely i know they're doing so many things up there that literacy project that Dick oh got tremendous so involved yeah. in it's put a, a dramatic focus when we think about funding jim i know that's a, a delicate subject often sure. but folks want to want to uh, want to support christian mission outreach obviously you wouldn't have been in existence for 21 years had there not been folks other than yourself giving an incredible amount of time and your own money to support Christian Mission Outreach. But how could other folks donate, or how do they donate? Greg, it's like your business. You've got to have money to do it. And it's just like any mission or any church, any organization. People might donate food, or they may donate clothing or other items, but by the same token, there's certain dollar value that's related to everything you do. Mm -hmm. You've got to have phones. You've got to have an office. You've got to have... Uh, transportation, and so there's a certain uh, expenditure that goes along with the program, mm -hmm. even though we're a non-profit, charitable, Christian organization. Mm -hmm. And so individuals, as well as businesses, churches, we're not governmental funded, but we are in, uh, funded throughout the area uh, from the volunteer donations of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they want to buy a box of food for a family, then we, we, we're thankful for that. 
Some give small amounts, some larger. But it's a, it's a, uh, Greg, you've heard of uh, faith. It's a faith adventure, you know. And the Bible says the faith, the just shall live by faith. And faith is believing it's happening when, you, when it's, it's going to happen when you don't have the funding for it. You heard Jim McManus say it. Faith is believing it's happening when you may not have the funds to do it, but making it happen anyway. And he's shown that for almost 21 years now at Christian Mission Outreach. Jim, thanks so much for being with hey, us this morning. Greg, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for the good work you're doing and the great job that you're doing on your program. Thank you, Jim. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. the Montrose family in Villa Romana Italian Restaurant, as well as Jim McManus and Christian Mission Outreach for making today's Carolina people so special. And if you want to reach Jim McManus and Christian Missions, contact 843-293-2411.